welcome. Shalom. Shalom. Greetings. I bring you greetings from Nairobi, Kenya. It is 10.21 in the a.m. as we start this broadcast and I bless the Lord for you. Welcome, welcome, welcome from all over the nations. We thank you, Jesus, for giving us this opportunity to gather together. Welcome all of you from different nations. Good to see you, Sister Anna, Sister Beth there in Seattle. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Share the link. Share the link, Ginger, my sister in Kansas. Welcome, welcome, wonderful people of the Lord. Hallelujah. The King is coming. We are starting off. Get your elements ready. In a short while, we are going to be sharing in the Lord's day. But we give him praise for he is coming. I am Malcolm David and I am so glad and honored of the Lord to come to share with you about joy in prayer. We are on day 35 and it's Psalm 35 that we are beginning to declare and then we shall go to Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Jeremiah, then we shall go to Mark, then we shall go to uh, Revelation. Wonderful, precious people. Six pack. Get ready. Hallelujah. Come on, share this video. Let somebody else know about this great movement that the Lord has begun among us and among the nations. Hallelujah. Every eye will see the King. The King is coming in glory and in majesty. Every eye will see the King. Do 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 Every eye will see the king. The king is coming. Welcome, welcome, all over the nations. Hallelujah. Our brother there in Uganda, brother Caleb, Prophet Caleb, my sister says today she's on time. Egypt is watching. The Lord bless you, wonderful people of Egypt. We also pray for you, our brother Fekri, uh, right there in Cairo. May the Lord continue to do his work among you. We thank God for the nation of Israel, and we pray over the nation of Israel. Father, we thank you for your word in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. The word of the Lord says, I received from the Lord what I also gave unto you. The night the Lord Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he took the cup and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this every time you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Beloved, if it's your first time here, I'd like to introduce to you the most powerful tenet of our faith. And this is communion with the Lord Jesus Christ. He said in the book of 1 Corinthians 11, 23, he says, Do this in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Communion is one of the most powerful tenets of our faith. It's one of the things that we know we are, we are made as social beings by God. And he allows us into communion with him. So we socialize vertically with God when we have communion. Not only that, we also proclaim the benefits of his broken body. When he was beaten and he was kicked and he was they whipped and they put thorns on his head and they used a club and they were hitting his head. They were hitting his head. And they, you know, they went ahead and, and tortured the body. They dragged him along the streets. I mean, it was a bad, bad scenery. Now that body was tortured, was beaten, was done, all those things. Yet there was no bone that was broken. True to the scripture in the book of Psalm 22, that indeed none of his bones was to be broken, but yet he was wounded for our transgressions, and by his stripes we were healed. I come to mention to you, probably you're watching me from a hospital bed, an isolation bed, you're watching this video, your friend sent to you. I come to tell you that Jesus is a healer. I am a testimony that he is a God who heals. I was in a sick bed for several days 
in an ICU situation under oxygen, highest concentration of oxygen, in a, in a ventilator situation. But God rescued me and pulled me out of that situation. And I am here to tell you that communion with Jesus brings healing. So as we partake of this bread and partake of this cup, I want to assure you this is better and bigger and greater than any vaccine you can ever take. Because God has already made a way of, of ensuring that no sickness, no disease will prevail against his children. The word of the Lord says that no weapon is that fashioned against you shall prosper. So as if it's, a, you know, the way we eat food every day, we need to have communion every day. And I thank God that he enabled us that every time we meet here, we always start with communion. And I thank God because this is very, very important. There, are, You know, there's a time I was doing this before I start the broadcast. I removed it for several days. When I was in prayer, the Holy Spirit said to me, no, 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 go back and do the same thing. Do it live. Let the people who have understanding and the people that don't have understanding get into this mystery of communion, the vertical communion, the way you have gone to see your friend, Ginger. Is the same way we have come to have communion with the Lord. And we are coming today to learn about joy in prayer. I'll be telling you more about that. So I want to pray for you. Now I believe you have your communion right there. It could be a piece of bread. It could be a cracker. It could be a biscuit. It could be... It's not in what it is, but in the symbolism. Praise the name of the Lord. We need to take it with a lot, a lot a lot of reverence to our God, knowing that he hears and answers prayer. On day April 13th, when I was finally able to, you know, eat something, I was on oxygen for several days. Now, when I was able to eat something with only a pipe on my nose, I asked for bread and I said, please, can you bring me bread? They said, yes. Then they were bringing me vitamin C, which was in a, a soluble form. And that vitamin C, I prayed over it and I said, Lord, this is the body. This is the blood of Jesus. And I looked at that bread and I committed this bread and I said, this bread. In fact, I did not even, I didn't leave even a, a drop of the bread. I ate everything and I said, Lord, as according to your word, I believe in your broken body. I believe. Hey. I believe in the blood of Jesus. And at that very moment, power entered into my spirit. I began to have faith. And I told God, I need new lungs. I made a bold prayer and said, Lord, give me new lungs. These ones are sick and they are diseased. They are fully full of COVID-19. They are destroyed by the COVID situation. Then I began to believe God. At the same time, the brethren were praying for me out there. They were telling God, oh, remember the man of God. Remember what he's been doing. Oh, they were praying. Uh, my mom in Rombo, she was praying, oh, your wife will not be a widow. We were praying. Everybody, including you, were praying for me as you knew. So I'm here to encourage somebody. Whatever the time, the situation, let us have communion with the Lord Jesus Christ. And he will contend with those that contend with you. He will fight against those who fight against you. Because he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Miss Betty, I want to encourage you. Welcome to this wonderful broadcast. And we are having our first communion with you. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord, Miss Betty. The Lord bless you mightily. So we want to pray for the communion one more time and then we shall go ahead and partake of the cup and partake of the bread if at all you want uh, help on to more understanding of this kindly get in touch my number is on the title of this video i bless the lord let us pray father we thank you for this corporate moment among the nations where we are partaking of the communion the lord's table and lord where we are receiving power from you to receive joy in the place of prayer. We take time to operate in the place of be a victory. We take time to operate in the place that you have given unto us, the place of proclamation. So we proclaim your death until you come, O God, by partaking of this cup 
and partaking of this bread, we declare that the blood of Jesus will speak in our lives, that the broken body of Jesus will speak in our lives, for we welcome the King into this time. We welcome the King of Kings. Hallelujah. From Kenya, we touch the different nations that we have gathered in today, that God, you will minister through us. We thank you, Lord, and we continue to bless you. In Jesus' name, we continue to pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, let's partake of the bread together. The bread, the bread, the broken body of Jesus. Let's partake of it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's bless the Lord. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your power that is in the blood. We thank you for your power that is in the broken body of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for authority. We thank you, God, for revelation. We thank you, God, for knowledge. We thank God for happiness. We thank God that you will occupy our hearts with gladness and that, Lord, you'll release the supernatural to us today and flow through our lives, O oh God, in a way that only you can. So, Lord, we thank you for this midnight hour in this location. Father, we thank you for this fourth watch of the night. We thank you, Lord, even as this time grows into 6 p.m. in Korea. We thank you, Lord, that across the nations, as you have gathered our Father, we will receive joy in the place of prayer. In Jesus' name, we continue to pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Sound the trumpet. Psalm 150, it says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. It says, praise him with the tambourine and harp, praise him with the cymbal, him with the blowing of the shofar, the ram's horn. What a joy to be able to do this, even as you commence to read the word of God in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to turn to your Bible. If you have your physical hard copy Bible, I want you to turn to the book of uh, Psalms 35. That is where we are. Psalm 35. Psalm 35. That's where we are coming to. Psalm 35. Psalm 35, Psalm 35. I will read it to you in the NIV 1984 version. If you're there, let me see by a show of hands, just tap onto the, you know, the like button or tap into, put an emoji, say I'm where I'm there, you know. Let's make this as corporate as possible so that we are together. Even if you are, you, are, you know, it's playing in the background, it is well. We bless the Lord for what is about to happen to us today as we come to receive joy in the place of prayer. Psalm 35, verse 1 says, Contend, O Lord, with those who contend with me. Take up shield and buckler. Arise and come to my aid. Psalm 35, verse 3. It says, Brandish spear and javelin. Against those who pursue me, say to my soul, I am your salvation. Verse 3. There are people here watching me today. You have been pursued by your enemies. There is contention. Probably 
sickness or disease or a financial problem or you know something you know like even your own purpose in life you don't know about your purpose in life and you're wondering how will i get to do this how will i get to do that then this is what the lord says to you that you come to the place of aligning yourself joy is a wonderful thing joy is infinite prayer can be and should be the most joyous experience this side of heaven when we think of heaven we have to think of a place of infinite joy a place where it's continuous it's continuous you know sometimes you may experience joy momentarily and when you're enjoying everything is fine you're joy you're enjoying everything your pet is happy your family is happy your children are happy everybody's happy and then all of a sudden you hear there are floods in China. Over a hundred people have been swept away by the floods. You know it interferes with your joy. If you, because even if it is not you, you kind of empathize with the people that are in distress. Probably you are healthy and you are in good health. But then you hear of somebody that you know who is down in sickness or in a sick bed. The joy that we are talking about is infinite, is a place that is continuous. Peter says of our Lord Jesus in 1 Peter verse 1 verse 8, he says, Whom not having seen the love we love, on whom though we have seen him not yet believing, we rejoice greatly with joy unspeakable and full of glory. The joy that comes from the Lord the joy of heaven is infinite and that is the joy when we are in prayer we are in a special place of the most joyous person there is or can be the presence of god cannot be equaled to a race we cannot say jesus even though he was jewish jesus was fully jewish jesus ascended a jewish man well able He's, he went up in heaven everybody saw him he came on the earth 40 days he stayed here the people touched his side people touched his 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 uh, his wounds he probably had a scar on his face because nobody is going to hit you when you have thorns on your head and you remain smooth like i am our lord jesus christ carried our burdens and when we are in prayer we come to the presence of the most joyous person there is or can be the person that conquered death, the person that indeed he takes up shield and buckler and arises and comes to our aid. I come to mention to you today that the Lord is brandishing his spear and javelin against those who are pursuing you. So right now, saying to your soul, I am your salvation. The psalmist David Writing Psalm 35 verse 4 says, May those who seek my life be disgraced and be put to shame. May those who plot my ruin be turned back in dismay. Even that arrow of COVID-19, that arrow of cancer, that arrow of malaria, that arrow of, of a heartbreak or whatever it is, may it be disgraced. May it be put to shame. May those that are plotting your ruin be turned back in dismay. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Psalm 35, verse number 6, verse number 5. It says, may they be like chaff before the wind, with an angel of the Lord driving them away. Hallelujah. These are two things that God said that the psalmist is praying. He's saying, as chaff, you know, like if you have seen chaff, uh, uh, Sister Betty, here in Africa, when we are making the beans, we have harvested the beans. And I don't know if you have seen this before or wheat, probably. There's what is called chaff. So when you are throwing it up um, on, a, on a tray, you are you are removing the chaff the wind is gonna blow away the chaff and the grain is going to be remaining on the tray so david prays this prayer and says may they be like chaff before the wind may with the angel of the lord driving them away but it is not enough for them to be blown by the wind the angels also have the work and not just the angels 
but in the scripture it says the angel of the Lord. Many a times when we see the term the angel of the Lord is referring to the Lord Jesus Christ. And you can imagine that your enemies, they are coming and they are being blown away like the wind. Verse 7 says, since they hid and he says verse 6, I like this one. Actually, we, <laughs> we love praying this prayer in spiritual warfare. Sister says, Shoshoe Latifa, right there, Cairo is not going to be the same with you knowing this knowledge. It will not be the same. You cannot operate the same way with this kind of knowledge God is giving you. May their path be slippery. May their path be dark and slippery with the angel of the Lord pursuing them the, the psalm, psalmist hey, he, he opens for us a realm that we can understand what's happening there that when you command the angels are at work the angel of the Lord driving them away number one as the chaff and number two may their path be dark and slippery with the angel of the Lord pursuing them and this is it because our God is a God of justice it says, since they hid their net for me without cause, and without cause dug a pit for me, may ruin overtake them by surprise. Hey, may ruin overtake them by surprise. May the net that they hid entangle them. May they fall into the pit to their ruin. Then my soul will rejoice in the Lord and delight in his salvation. These are prayers of assurance we are making before God. That God is perfect and infinite in his joy. That irrespective of the situations that are there, we are knowledgeable that just as we cannot expose ourselves to the bright rays of the sun and be unaffected by it, so we cannot expose, expose our souls to the glory of God eh, and not be affected or changed by it. Coming from my sickbed, I had not seen the sun for 18 days. In fact, they used to put the sun through my veins. They used to put the effect of the sun through my veins as vitamin D3. I could not go outside. I could not wake out from my bed. I could not. It was a difficult time. In as much as I knew the sun outside is good to enjoy, I could not get out of my bed without a wheelchair. I could not stand on my own. I was afflicted. But beloved of the Lord, when I got out of that hospital bed, hallelujah, hey, hey, when I got outside, the Lord waited and waited and waited. He made sure that I was to leave at exactly 6 p.m. I was released at 10, but the clearing process could not be complete until 6 p.m. I had a pending medical bill, quite huge uh, medical bill. And in that medical bill that was there, God made a way and said, even though this medical bill is there, this man must walk out of this hospital today. And the process of getting everything together, everything together, everything together, until an idea was floated and they brought the chariot, the chariot's logbook, it was brought and given to the hospital. And they said, this is our collateral, release this man from hospital, we'll get him out. As I speak to you today, the Lord is faithful because he cleared the hospital bill, all of it. And when I got outside, I did not see the sun. It was at night. It was 6 o'clock going to 7. And the traffic jam was, you know, building up everywhere. But we were able to smoothly come and arrive at my house at 7 p.m. that night. The next day when it woke up and I was just lying in the sun. Oh, praise the Lord. Hey, glory to Jesus. I was being affected by the sun. My skin changed. I began to feel my skin is becoming more, you know, it's touching my body. It's getting to my body. Initially, my skin, my skin was sagging. And, and, you know, I was looking like a sick man. But God, when I got out of hospital and I sat in the sun, the rays of the sun affected me positively. 
The same way we cannot show up in the presence of the Lord and remain the same. Jesus is the say, is the most joyous person there is or can be. Nothing can diminish his joy. Nothing can diminish the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. I see my nurse here. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, just write a comment there. The Lord, he is able, he turned around situation, lying there in the sun. The sun is no longer being administered to me in my veins. The sun was being administered to me now directly from heaven. And that was changing me. Beloved, I want to tell you today, rejoice greatly with joy unspeakable because of the full glory of God. As you are listening to these Psalms that you have been reading every day, I want you to know that as you read out the Psalm, it is not that we are only reading out the psalm for the purpose of just reading the psalm to finish. We are declaring Josh Momani, my brother. Hallelujah. He is here as a testimony. He administered the sun in my veins. He's one of the nurses and I bless you, sir. And I pray for you. May the Lord give you favor. May the Lord protect you from every disease, every sickness. You will never catch it in your sick bed. You will never be in a sick bed. The Lord bless you, Josh Momani, for the Lord connecting me with you inside that hospital hallelujah thank you holy spirit psalm 35 verse 4 verse 9 says then my soul will rejoice in the lord and delight in his salvation may your soul delight when you have been exposed to the rays of the sun you cannot be the same I tell you, the same way we cannot be in the presence of God and not be affected and changed by it, but we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are transformed in the same image from glory to glory, even as from the Lord, the Spirit, we are being transformed. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. Beloved, we begin to change and begin to transform when you are in the place of prayer. That's why the psalmist is saying, Then my soul will rejoice in the Lord and delight in his salvation. My whole being will exclaim, Who is like you, O Lord? You rescue the poor from those who are too strong for them, the poor and the needy from those who rob them. Who is like thee? among the gods oh hallelujah it's coming into this assurance of the lord it's coming into this knowledge of this great god just like the rays of the sun touched on that body that 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 transformation that began to happen within my my body for 18 days without seeing the sun and then the second day of the sun and something begins to happen in my body Something begins, restoration begins to happen. Restoration begins to happen. God begins to restore. Psalm 35, verse number 11. We are reading from the NIV uh, 1984 version. It says, ruthless witnesses come forward. They question me on things I know nothing about. They repay me evil for good and leave my soul forlorn. Psalm 35 verse 13, yet when they were ill, I put on sackcloth and humbled myself with fasting. When my prayers returned to me and answered, I went about mourning. I went about mourning as though for my friend and brother. I bowed my head in grief as though weeping for my mother. But when I stumbled, they gathered in glee. Attackers gathered against me when I was unaware. They slandered me without ceasing. Like the ungodly, they maliciously mocked. They gnashed their teeth at me. O oh Lord, how long will you look on? Rescue my life from their ravages. My precious life from these lions. I will give thanks in the great assembly among among the thrones of people i will praise you psalms 13 verse number um psalms 13 verse number psalms 35 verse number 19 it says let those not gloat over me who are my enemies without cause let those let 
not those who hate me without reason maliciously wink the eye. Now let me show you something. I'm not talking about physical people. I'm talking about the realm of the spirit. The wicked don't need your permission to be the wicked. They are the wicked anyway. And they are looking for ways and opportunities to hate you without reason and maliciously wink their eye against you. Verse 20. They speak, they don't speak peaceably, but devise false accusations against those who live quietly in the land. They gape at me and say, aha, aha, with our own eyes, we have seen it. Oh Lord, you have seen this. Be not silent. Don't be far from me. Oh Lord. Psalm 35, verse number 20, 23. Awake. And arise to my defense. Contend for me, my Lord and my God. My God and my Lord. Hey, hallelujah. How would you rise to the place of joy? My brother Josh, rise to the place of joy. To the place to arise and to uh, the place of arising that the Lord will contend for you. That the Lord will fight for you. That the Lord will vindicate you. Psalm 35 verse 24 says, Vindicate me in your righteousness, O Lord my God. Don't let them gloat over me. Hallelujah. May all those who exalt themselves over me be clothed with shame and disgrace. Verse 27. Hallelujah. I love verse 27. Ay, 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 ay. If you are not yet there, I want you to get there because in verse 27, there's something there I want you to hear. There's something powerful that the Lord, I want, I want the Lord to release to your spirit now. Uh -huh. Psalm 35 verse 27 is coming up. Hey! Hey! Do -do -do. Hey! Ta-da-da! The King is coming in glory and in majesty. Every eye will see the King. Say, The King is coming in glory and in majesty. Every eye will see Him. Every eye will see the King. Hallelujah. Psalm 35, 27. Hey, hallelujah. It's coming. The beauty render. Glory. Oh, my Lord. I bless you. Now, I feel the anointing so heavily in this place right now. It says, may those who delight in my vindication shout for joy and gladness. May they always say, the Lord be exalted who delights in the well-being of his servant. My tongue will speak of your righteousness and of your praises all day long. The Lord delights in the prosperity of his servant. The Lord delights in the prosperity of his servant. That God delights in your prosperity, beloved. The Lord delights in your prosperity. That in his infinite joy, we have exposed ourselves to his glory. We cannot remain unchanged. So as we encounter the infinite joyous one, we take on an unspeakable joy. We take on an unspeakable joy. Jesus connected prayer and joy. You understand? If you are here, you may have been having a depression spirit. I want you to know that prayer and joy are related. In fact, they are joined. They are together. Then in John chapter 16, verse 24, it says, Hitherto, have ye asked anything in my name? Ask, and you shall receive, that your joy may be made full. I shared about the boldness in prayer, being bold of an assurance that was that is the that that when we pray God is answering us miss betty i want to assure you every moment you have prayed god has heard your prayers and that's why he would bring into your way the word of god the knowledge of god that way you can receive joy joy and prayer are you know they are together they are connected 
and you shall receive and your joy shall be made full. Brother Zach, good to see you. It's been a minute since we saw you here. We bless the Lord. But why is it that when we come to prayer meetings, they are dull and depressing instead of exciting and joyful? The prayer meeting is the meeting where you will see when people go to church, it's the less attended. It's the one that people don't come. They assume it is for the prayer warriors, <laughs> as you call them. It is not for me. For me, I'm a busy person. They will understand. I will not come for prayer. But prayer is joined with joy. It's together. Infinite joy, exposing ourselves to the rays of the sun, the glory, the wave of glory that is coming. Instead of being afraid of the number of glow of wave of COVID, we are telling us the fourth wave is out. But we have come to declare it that it's not about the wave of sickness. We are what we declare the wave of glory is our portion. The wave of glory is our portion. It's time to preach the gospel like never before. It's time to share the message of the Lord Jesus like never before. It's a time to apply the joy of the Lord. Beloved of the Lord, as we go to Proverbs chapter 30, I come to submit to you a very powerful aspect of what we are reading. The word of God, the word of God, the word of God. In the name of Jesus. We come to declare this wonderful aspect. Huh. Yes. Just hold on there and get your notebook. I want to tell you something that will be very beneficial to you. Proverbs chapter 30. Let's go there. I will see the king. Do 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 You know, many pastors and many church leaders have already given up on the prayer meeting. They, you know, they've just like almost given up, you know, not all of them are like this, you know. And the ones that give up on the prayer meeting, they wonder why their churches are dead and powerless. If you have left the prayer meeting, then definitely there is no power. You have no power. It appears to us that our churches have become self-centered, complacent, and that has made us, you know, not being able to experience this joy we are talking about. We experience joy in praying when we properly order our relationships. Let me say that again. We completely, or we experience joy when we properly order our relationships. All persons can be grouped into three groups. Now, I want you to, knowledge, to get this knowledge. We read in the book of Mark, Mark chapter 5, I did Mark chapter 6, when Jesus was about to uh, do the miracle of the bread and the fish, he ordered that the people were to sit down in groups of fifties and hundreds. And they sat on the green grass. Now, for us to be able to uh, experience joy in praying, we must order our relationships. All persons can be grouped into three. One is God. Two is others. And three is ourselves. The order in which we prioritize these three groups determine our joy in prayer. So I want to give you an acronym, JOY. J-O-Y. J stands for Jesus. Jesus, communion. O stands for others. Intercession. O. Y stands for yourself or what we call supplication. Intercession is prayer for others. 
Supplication is prayer for self. Communion. We are made as social kings. We are to socialize horizontally with other human beings and we are to socialize vertically with God. Prayer should be the first and foremost active relationship and fellowship in a social sense. Not a rehearsing of a list of wants. Many times, sometimes we go to prayer with just wants and needs, you know, just coming to them. Our priority should be our socially experiencing our God. That's our priority. It is common with the most spiritual saints of God that they give priority to their relationship with God, even to the point of engaging in a vertical relationship first. That is early in the morning. Before they relate to others horizontally, you know, you will show me the path of life in thy presence, in fullness of joy, in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Psalm 16 verse 11. A local church should give its priority, should give priority to a prayer meeting as a personal encounter with God. You as a person must not just pray with, for, a, for once, but must pray to have a personal encounter with God. Hey, I come to tell you that I desire a personal encounter with God. I desire a personal, a personal encounter with God. That's what I desire. When I wake up in the morning, J for Jesus, he's the one. Psalm 16, 11 says, at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. J for Jesus. O for others. Y for yourself. The acronym joy. J-O-Y. Joy in prayer. I'll talk about others in a short while. Let's begin to read about these Proverbs. Proverbs 30 verse 1. says the sayings of Agur, son of Jake, or Jake, an oracle. This man declared to Ethel, to Ethel and to Ukal. Proverbs 30 verse 2. I am the most ignorant of men. I do not have a man's understanding. It says, I am not the mo I am the most ignorant of men. I do not have a man's understanding. Verse 3. I have not learned wisdom, nor have I knowledge of the Holy One. Verse 4. Who has gone up to heaven? And come down. Who has gathered up the wind in a hollow in his hands? Who has wrapped up the waters in his cloak? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? Tell me the name of his son. Tell me if you know. Verse 5. Every word of God is flawless. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Do not add to his words or he will rebuke you and prove you to be a liar. Two things I ask of you, O Lord. Do not refuse me before I die. Keep falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. Otherwise, I may have too much and disown you and say, Who is the Lord? Or I may become poor and steal and so dishonor the name of the Lord. Verse 10, do not slander a servant to his master, or he will curse you and you will pay for it. They are those, they are those. Verse number, verse number 11, Proverbs 30, 11 says, They are those who curse, their, who curse their fathers and do not bless their mothers. Those who are pure in their own eyes and yet are not cleansed of their filth. Verse 13, those whose eyes are ever so haughty and whose glances are disdainful. Those whose teeth are swords and whose jaws are set with knives to devour the poor from the earth and needy from man all mankind. Verse 15, Proverbs 30. The leech and has two daughters. Give, give, they cry. There are three things that are never satisfied. Four that never say enough. Verse 16. The grave, the barren womb, land which is never satisfied with water, and fire which never says enough. 
those four things never say enough. Proverbs 30 verse 17. The eye that mocks a father, that scorns obedience to a mother, will be pecked out by the ravens of the valley, will be eaten by vultures. In my travels, I've physically met a man whose eye was pecked by a bird. Then this brought this scripture to my mind. I said, could it be that this man was mocking his father? Could it be that this man was scorning obedience to a mother? Because literally, the birds pecked in his eye. Proverbs 30 verse 18 says, There are three things that are too amazing for me. Four that I don't understand. Oh, I love this scripture. It gives me so much knowledge, Miss Betty. When you come to this knowledge of the word of God, it opens your eyes. You begin to see something new, something brand new. The Lord bringing peace in a difficult situation. The Lord bringing favor in a difficult situation. Said so are the way of the eagle in the sky, the way of a snake on a rock, the way of a ship on the high seas, and the way of a man with a maiden. Those are four things that I don't understand, says the proverb. Verse 21, under three things the earth trembles, under four it cannot bear up. A servant who becomes king, a fool who is full of food. An unloved woman who is married and a maidservant who displaces her mistress. So the earth cannot bear up for these four things. A servant who becomes a king, a fool who is full of food, an unloved woman who is married. So I see a lot of problems. Here in my country, I see a lot of challenges happening in marriages today. Because in those marriages and everywhere, people are not taking their position. Husbands, we are told to love your wife. Love our wife. Says your wife, personal. Says, husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church. And then to the women, we are told, submit to your husband. As it is fitting in the Lord. Now you see what's happening today is that men and women stay together as man and woman. There are very few husband and wives. And when we don't have a husband and a wife in a marriage, we have a problem because marriage is not for men and women. Marriage is for husbands and wives. And that's why you see that the man is still thinking of himself like he's single. He's still going out there trying to look for another one. And that is called adultery. The other one is called an adulteress. And they don't care these days. They say, don't worry. You just go to your wife, then come back to me when it's convenient. I'm your holiday wife, some they say. So an unloved woman who is married, the earth cannot bear. Hey, it is not possible. So I urge you men and women, let us pray. To become husbands and wives. Even though we are married. Take time to pray daily. And to service the marriage covenant. The things that you made a covenant before God and man. To do. They hold. Legally. If you have just gotten the legal, uh, the legal papers. It still means it's the same thing. God is seeing you as a marriage. Even if you have stayed together husband and wife. God is seeing you as a marriage. So the possibilities of having uh, somebody else is, is over. There's nothing called my ex. What ex? What ex? What? <laughs> I don't understand this business. My ex. Which ex? There's no ex somewhere. The only ex we know is in the alphabet. If at all you want to talk about another man who loved you before and it ended before you got married, that person, the story ended there. He cannot have a portion in your marriage to tell you something. You say, you know, my ex was telling me. Which ex, Bwana? Ex iko kwa alphabet. Wachana na yo uko. Wachana na mambo ya alphabet. Wecha uko kando. Leave it. Do not go there talking about ex. Because you're going to fall in adultery. And an unloved woman who is married, the earth cannot bear. See, these proverbs talk about 
my, uh, women more than men. Uh, it, it's also based on the culture of the writer because he was a Jew. And we know the cultural attributes of the Jew and how they, they are relating with the women is different. Proverbs 30 verse 24. Four things in earth are small, yet they are extremely wise. Ants are creatures of little strength, yet they store up their food in summer. Connies are creatures of little for real power, yet they make their homes in the crags. Eh. Eh. Connies. They are also called the hyrax. It says hyraxes are creatures of little power, yet they make their home in the crowds. Locusts have no king, yet they advance together in ranks. The military is a place of ranks. Ranks. The military understand ranks. They understand. My soldier friends tell me, and I really, really appreciate the soldiers. I can't wait for the time when I go to minister to them. I long to do that. It's one of the things I love to do, and I look forward to one day to go into a barracks to just share with the soldiers because this is one of the people that I'm passionate about. I've shared with the policemen. I've shared with the prison officers. Now there remains for me to go and share with the military. And I'm looking forward to that because I enjoy their discipline. The military have a discipline that keeps them disciplined forces. There's a reason why they are called disciplined forces. For example, if your commander tells you, uh, do something, the only response is, yes, sir, it's not any other response, not an explanation. In the civil service, you'll explain to your boss and say, oh, you know, my wife was this, that, you give a reason. But in the military, when they tell you, jump out of the aircraft now, you say, yes, sir, and you jump, even if you don't have a parachute. That is how they do it. That's the military code. Now, here it says something to us. The locusts have no king, yet they understand the ranks. Military are organized like that because, like in the World War, Hitler sent three million soldiers to go and fight in Russia. Three million. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. That is uh, the size of some of these countries we have. Some of the countries, just like half the population. Three million German soldiers. And what he did not know was that it was during the winter in Russia and he gave them summer uniforms. So God fought for Russia because they died, the guys just were dying out of winter. They were dying out of the snow. They were dying from the freezing cold. They had drunks. They were told march in. And the SS and the Nazis, they went in ranks, just like the locusts. Verse 28. A lizard can be caught with a hand, yet it is found in the king's palaces. Verse 29. There are three things that are stately in their stride. Four that are that move with stately bearing. A lion, mighty among beasts, who retreats before nothing. A strutting rooster, a he-goat, and a king secure against a revolt. These are stately in their bearing. Verse 32. If you play the fool and exalt yourself, or if you plan evil, clap your hand over your mouth. That, emo that emoji is in the book of Proverbs 30, 20, 30 verse 32. So if you pl play the fool and exalt yourself, if you plan evil, clasp your hand over your mouth. For as churning cream produces butter, and as twisting the nose produces blood, so stirring up anger produces strife. It produces strife. It produces strife. That is what it does. It produces strife. When you are in the place of anger, you are producing strife, says Proverbs 30, verse 33. So let us go on to the book of Ecclesiastes. As we come to talk about the O for others, in the word of God, the O, eh? for us to get joy in prayer, 
We must order the relationships. One, God. Two, others. Three, ourselves. Let's go to Ecclesiastes. I want to talk about intercession or others. Ta -da -da. Ecclesiastes chapter 6. Do -do -do. Yeah. Ta -da -da. Say, will you be right there? He died for you and rose again. Every eye will see the king. The king is coming in glory and in majesty. Every eye will see him. Every eye will see the king. Oh, do do do. Hey, do do do. Say, do do do. Hallelujah. Sound the trumpet. Ecclesiastes, 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 Ecclesiastes. We call it in Swahili, Muhubiri, Muhubiri, Muhubiri. Try that, Betty. Can you say Muhubiri, Sister Ginger? Muhubiri, Muhubiri. <laughs> that is Swahili for Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes Sita. Ecclesiastes Sita. If you are saying it in Swahili, you say Ecclesiastes Sita. Sita is number six. So that is where we are going. Ecclesiastes chapter six. They all enjoy others. Intercession. Most answered prayer, the most answered prayer is the prayer for others. I said again, the most answered prayer is prayer for others. Intercession is a test as to the genuineness of our motive in prayer. The prayer for others is the most answered prayer. That right now you are in a situation, begin to pray for others. In the similar situation as you, you begin to pray for others and you will see God in your circumstance. Because the, the intercession is a test as to the genuineness of our motive in prayer. Are we most interested in getting blessings for ourselves or for others? Do we pray for those outside of our natural family and church family? Do we pray? Is this a question we're asking? You know, Paul's testimony was always in the very supplication of mine on behalf of all, making my supplication with joy. Philippians 1 verse 4. And then he says in the King James, Wherefore, my brethren, beloved, and longed for my joy and crown, so stand first in the Lord, my beloved. Philippians chapter 4 verse 1. If we seek our own joy, we will miss it. But if we seek the joy and good of others, then we will have ours. Not that we have lordship over your faith, but are Help us of your joy, for in faith ye stand first. Second Corinthians chapter twelve. Uh, Second Corinthians chapter one, verse twenty-four. So we see that we must order the relationships in order for us to have joy in prayer. I've given you the first J means Jesus, communion, having our vertical relationship with God in check before we have our horizontal uh, relationship. Then we also have O for others. Others. When we put others in our, when we pray for others more, when we pray more for others, then God opens the door, you know, and begins to release the joy that we need ourselves. Ecclesiastes 6 says, I have seen, I have seen another evil under the sun and it weighs heavily. On mankind. He says God gives wealth. God gives wealth to a man. He says 
God gives some people wealth, possessions, and honor so that they lack nothing that their hearts desire, but God does not grant them the ability to enjoy them. And strangers enjoy them instead. This is the meaningless. This is meaningless. A, griev a grievous evil. Verse 3. A man may have a hundred children and live many years, yet no matter how long he lives, if he cannot enjoy his prosperity and does not receive the proper burial, I say that a stillborn child is better off than he. It comes without meaning, it departs in darkness, and in darkness its name is shrouded. Verse 5. Though it never saw the sun or knew anything, it has more rest than does that man. Even if he lives a thousand years twice over, but fails to enjoy his prosperity, don't all go to the same place? Verse 7. Everyone's toil is for their mouth, yet their appetite is never satisfied. What advantage have the wise over fools? What do the poor gain by knowing how to conduct themselves before others? Let me come back to verse 7. You see, the appetite is one area that we are not satisfied at all. It says everyone's toil is for their mouth, yet their appetite is not satisfied. It's never satisfied. So you need to check on your appetite. When you are praying for others, you must check on your appetite. My sister Felistas, in, in Masabit, and remind somebody else. Let us have the appetite for the word of God because it is not satisfied. I would rather my appetite is for the things of God because appetite in itself will not be satisfied. So how much more if we have, we have that hunger and thirst for righteousness that we want to seek God more and more and more. We want to spend time more in prayer. We want to spend time more in fasting. We want to spend time more in reading the word even when everything is okay. Even when there is joy, when there is happiness, when everything is, is perfectly working, we are still fasting, we are still praying, we are still telling God matters that even don't belong to us. Verse 8, what advantage of the wise of our fools? What do the poor gain by knowing how to conduct themselves before others? Verse 9, better what the eye sees than the roving of the appetite. This too is meaningless, a chasing after the wind. The raving appetite is not in the eyes, but it's within. It says better what the eye sees than the roving appetite. That the appetite is one of the things that many times causes men into serious sin. You know, better what the eye sees than the roving of the appetite. This too is meaningless, a chasing after the wind. Verse number 10 says whatever exists has already been named. And what man and what man is has already been known. No man can contend with one who is stronger than he. The more the works, the less the meaning. How does that profit anyone? For who knows what good for a man in life, what, what is good for a man in life during the few and meaningless days he passes like the shadow? Who can tell him what will happen under the sun after he is gone? Who can tell him? Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 12. Let us go quickly into Jeremiah in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God that we are receiving a crown for the Lord, from the Lord, by listening to these words. There are five things that I mentioned to you that are very key for us to grasp the word of God. One is to meditate. Meditate on the word of God. Two, is to memorize. Memorize the word of God. Three is to study. Study the word of God. Four. Four is to read. Read the word of God. And five is to hear and hear the word of God. So when you are reading the scriptures for yourself, reading it silently to yourself, is good, but you notice that at some point you will not get faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the message of Christ. We thank God that our faith is activated every time when we hear the words of God. And when we hear them loudly, I charge you to get back and to listen to this, uh, to this recording right after we are done on the YouTube channel. 
and just play the scriptures. Let the scriptures come back into your spirit. Marinate on them. Listen to the voice of the word of God. Listen to the word of God. Let you listen to the ma marinate in the word of God. Dwell in the word of God. Remain in the word of God because the king is coming. The king is coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. We are going to talk about the why for yourself. J O Y. Jesus, others, yourself. Do do do. Do do do. Do do do. Oh. Jeremiah chapter number 36. It says, In the fourth year of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, king of Judah, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from the Lord. It says, Take a scroll, take a scroll and write on it all the words I have spoken. I have spoken to you concerning Israel, Judah, and all the nations from the time I began speaking to you to the reign of Josiah till now. Perhaps when the people of Judah hear about every disaster I plan to inflict them, they will each turn from their wicked ways, then I will forgive their wickedness and their sin. So Jeremiah, called Baruch, son of Neriah, and while Jeremiah dictated all the words the Lord has spoken to him, Baruch wrote them on the scroll. Verse 5. It says, Then Jeremiah told Baruch, I am restricted. I am not allowed to go to the Lord's temple. Verse 6. You see, they are restricted. Welcome, my brother Lemuel, Solomon. Jeremiah had already been restricted. He had been given a restraining order not to be seen around the temple area. So this is what Jeremiah does because he has been given a word by the Lord and said, write it down. Verse 6, so you go to the house of the Lord on a day of fasting and read to the people from the scroll the words of the Lord as you wrote as I dictated. Read them to all the people of Judah who come in from their towns. Perhaps they will bring their petition before the Lord and will each turn from their wicked ways. For the anger and the wrath pronounced against these people by the Lord are great. Verse 8. Baruch son of Neriah did everything Jeremiah the prophet told him to do at the Lord's temple. He read the words of the Lord from the scroll. Like what we are doing here, we are reading the words of the Lord. In the ninth month of the fifth year of Joachim son of Josiah king of Judah, a time of fasting before the Lord was proclaimed for all the people in Jerusalem and those who had come from the towns of Judah. From the room of Jeremiah, son of Shaphan, the secretary, which was the upper courtyard at the entrance of the new gate of the temple, Baruch read to all the people at the Lord's temple the words of Jeremiah from the scroll. When Micaiah, son of Gemariah, the son of Shaphan, heard all the words of the Lord from the scroll, he went down to the secretary's room in the royal palace where all the officials were sitting. Elishama, the secretary and Deliah, uh, son of Shemaiah, Elthana, son of Akbo, and Gemariah, son of Shaphan, Zedekiah, son of Ananiah, and all the other officials. Verse 13. After Micaiah told them everything he had heard, Baruch read from the people from the scroll. All the officials sent Jehud, son of Nethaniah, the son of Shemaliah, the son of Shuki, Kushi, this, and to say to Baruch, bring the scroll from which you have read to the people and come. So Baruch, son of Neriah, went with them to the scroll with a scroll in his hand. They said to him, sit down, please, and read it to us. So Baruch read it to them. When they heard all these words, they looked at each other in fear and said to Baruch, we must report all these words to the king. Then they asked Baruch, tell us, how did you write all this? Did Jeremiah dictate it? Yes, Baruch replied. 
He dictated all these words to me, and I wrote them in ink on the scroll. Then the officials said to Baruch, You and Jeremiah, go and hide. Don't let anyone know where you are. After they put the scroll in the room of Elishama, the secretary, they went to the king in the courtyard and reported everything to him. The king sent Jehu to get the scroll, and Jehud, Jehudi brought it from the room of Elishama, the secretary, and read it to the king and all the officials standing beside him. It was the ninth month, eh? and the king was sitting in the winter apartment with a fire burning in the fire pot in front of him. Whenever Jehudi had read three or four columns of the scroll, the king cut them off with a scribe's knife and threw them into the fire pot and, uh, until the entire scroll was burned in the fire. The king and all his attendants who had all these words showed no fear, nor did they tear their clothes. Even though El, El Nathan, Deliah, and Gamariah asked the king not to burn the scroll, he would not listen to them. Instead, the king commanded Jeremiah, a son of the king, Seraiah, son of Azrael, and Shalimiah, son of Abedel, to arrest Baruch, the scribe, and Jeremiah, the prophet. But the Lord had hidden them. Hey, 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 glory. Listen, the Lord had hidden them. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Woo! Ay, 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 I love it. Listen, that the Lord has a capacity to hide you. He has a capacity, Miss Betty, to totally hide you from every challenge in your life. He is hiding you. When the king has said, go arrest Baruch, go arrest Jeremiah, then the Lord says, uh, the word of the Lord says to us in Jeremiah chapter 36 verse 26, when the king made a command and said, Arrest Baruch the scribe and Jeremiah the prophet, the Lord had hidden them. Ginger, may the Lord hide you. May the Lord hide you, Solomon. Against every attack, every command, my sister Anna, may the Lord hide you. May the Lord hide you, Nemo. May the Lord totally hide you in his pavilion, totally far away from every challenge and every attack of the evil one. Verse 27, after the king burnt the scroll containing the words that Baruch had written at Jeremiah's dictation, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, <clears throat> take another scroll and write on it the, all the words that were on the first scroll, <laughs> which Joachim king of Judah burned up. Also tell Joachim king of Judah, this is what the Lord says, you burnt that scroll and said, why did you write on it that the king of Babylon would suddenly come and destroy this land and wipe from it both man and beast. Therefore, this is what the Lord says about Joachim, king of Judah. He will have no one to sit on the throne of David. His body will be thrown out and exposed to the heat by day and the frost by night. I will punish him and his children and his, and his attendants for their wickedness. I will bring on them and those living in Jerusalem and the people of Judah every disaster I pronounced against them because they have not listened. So Jeremiah took another scroll and gave it to the scribe Baruch son of Neriah. And Jeremiah dictated, Baruch wrote on it all the words of the scroll that Joachim king of Judah had burnt in the fire and many similar words were added to them. Hey, you cannot burn God's homework. I want to tell you, beloved, it's not possible. God has given the prophet work to do and say, write it down on a scroll. He does it. He calls the scribe, the scribe Baruch, son of Neriah, comes, he writes it, he writes it, he writes it, he writes it. Columns and columns of the writing. And then after that, his ink and his paper is thrown in the fire. After that, the enemy wants to go against him. He wants to go for him. But what did the Lord do? The Lord hid them. Beloved of the Lord, as we continue with the six pack, we're going to the book of Mark. And I bless the Lord because of giving us this opportunity for us to take the word of God, heavy dose of the word of God. We are in the book of Mark, chapter 
6. Is it 6 or 7? We are on chapter 7. Mark 7. What a joy. What a joy. That even if you burn, the Bible is the most burnt book in history. This book, it has been burnt many, many, many times over. They have burnt this book. They have put it in acid. They have exploded it. They have torn it apart. They have poured paint on it. They have desecrated the Bible, but they can never destroy the words of Jesus. When they destroy, we write again. When they destroy the word, we write the word again. So no matter what your situation, circumstance is, find joy in the place of prayer. Why is for yourself? And I'll be talking about why shortly as we read Mark and then we shall go on to conclude this thing about joy in prayer and then God is going to help us. Mark chapter 7. Mark 7. The Pharisees and some of the teachers of the law who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus and saw some of the disciples eating food with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. The Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they give their hands a ceremonial washing, holding to the tradition of the elders. When they came from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash their hands. And they observe many other traditions, such as washing of cups, pitchers and, pitchers and kettles. Verse 5. So the Pharisees and teachers of the law asked Jesus, why don't your disciples live according to the traditions of the elders instead of eating their food with their defiled hands? He replied, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites, as it is written, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. Verse 8. They have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to human traditions. And he continued, You have a fine way of setting aside the commands of God in order to observe your own traditions. For Moses said, Honor your father and mother, and anyone who curses his father or mother is to be put to death. But you say that if anyone declares that what might have been used to help their father or mother is Koban, Koban means devoted to God, then you no longer let them do anything for their father or mother. Thus you nullify the word of God by your tradition that you have handed over down. And you do many things like that. So the Pharisees had a way of going around the law. Verse 14. Again Jesus called the crowd to him and said, Listen to me, everyone, and understand this. Nothing outside a person can defile them by going into them. Rather, it is what comes out of a person that defiles them. After he had left the crowd and entered the house, his disciples asked him about his parable. Are you so dull? He asked. Don't you see that nothing that enters a person from the outside can defile them? For it, is, it does not go into their heart, but into their stomach, then out of their body. In saying this, Jesus declared all foods clean. Verse 20. He went on. What comes out of a person is what defiles them. For it is not from within, out of a person, for it is from within, out of a person's heart, that evil thoughts come, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from inside and defile a person. A very sad story that has just happened here in Kenya. A very rich man shot his wife dead and then shot himself dead. Similar, similar cases all across different parts of the city, different parts of Kenya, where you see a man killing his wife. A wife killing his children, her children, then committing suicide herself. These thoughts do not come 
from outside. They come from within. Irrespective of the motive of the murder, murder comes from within the heart. So if the heart is constantly imagining death, disease, sickness, suicide, out of that heart is going to speak like uh, death. Out of that same words that you have in your heart. For it says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So do you want to know what is in your heart? Listen to your words. What are you saying? So make sure you have the word of God so that as many of the things that are coming out, they are the word of God. Mark 7, 24 says, Jesus left that place and went to the vicinity of Tyre and went to the house and did not want anyone to know it. Yet he could not keep his presence secret. In fact, as soon as she heard about him, a woman whose little daughter was possessed by an evil spirit, but an impure spirit, came and fell at his feet. The woman was Greek, born in Syrian Phoenicia. She begged Jesus to drive the demon out of her daughter. First, let the children, verse 27, first let the children eat all they want, he told her, for it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. The Lord replied, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he told her, for such a reply, you go. The demon has left your daughter. She left home. She went home and found her child lying on bed and the demon was gone. This beautiful scripture is the one that brings to us the knowledge that healing is our bread. The children of God. Healing is our bread. Healing is the bread of the children of God. Healing is for you. Yes, we cannot talk about the gospel of Jesus Christ without talking about healing. We cannot talk about the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ without mentioning that he is a healer. Without mentioning that he is a deliverer. He is a healer. He is a deliverer. He has come to bring healing. I am a living witness. Having come from an ICU in COVID-19 situation with a heavy medical bill and God cleared the medical bill for me. Beloved of the Lord, you are here, you are challenged. There is something that you are looking to do. I come to tell you that healing is the bread of the children of God. I come to mention to you that healing is your bread, that you're going to eat of healing from the table of the Lord, that the Lord is going to give it to you, Jeanette, that yes, as they go to take you to that operation, God will already have done his operation in your body. My sister Sarah, I come to pray for you. That medical exam that said you are COVID positive is the same medical exam that is going to say you are COVID negative. And the only positive we need in our body is to be positive for the blood of Jesus. We need to be found in the place of faith. We need to be found in the place of total dependence on the Lord. Beloved of the Lord, the ministry requires resources. It requires finances. But I've told God, I will not spend time asking people for money. I will not do that. But I will keep praying and telling God that he may send the resources, that we may do the work of the Lord easily. And with, with, with ease that the Lord will even send laborers to assist in the work. That the Lord will send help, will send technology. He will send the things we need. We want to pray over Joyce Mamu's brother-in-law. What's the name? We want to give a name so that we can pray for them. Healing is the bread. Healing is the bread of the children of God. Hallelujah. Should the Lord touch you to give towards this ministry and what you are doing because it, it takes a lot. We need to, I need to stop everything else I do for this and I thank God that he has never, ever, 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 ever let me down. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Never, even a single moment ever let me down. So you want to be part of this ministry by your giving for the missions and the things I'm doing for, you know, just the overheads of everything that it takes to create these videos the title of this video has all the details. You can use PayPal, 
you can use uh, M-Pesa, you can use Send Money. I need your support. So I'm going to ask you to do that as the Lord helps you towards the end of this broadcast. So the demon was gone. It says again in verse 31, Mark 7, 31. Then Jesus left the vicinity of Tyre and went through Sidon down to the Sea of Galilee and into the region of the Decapolis. There some people brought to him a man who was deaf and could hardly talk. And they begged Jesus. And they begged Jesus to place his hand on him. After he took him aside, away from the crowd, Jesus put his fingers into the man's ears. Then he spit and touched the man's tongue. He looked up to heaven and with a deep sigh said to him, Ephtatha, which means be opened. Be opened. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At this, the man's ears were opened and his tongue Thank you, Jesus. I'm just getting a praise report here. Let me just uh, open it. Then you can be able to share it with you. It says, at this, the man's ears were opened. His tongue was loosed and he began to speak plainly. Jesus commanded them not to tell anyone. But the more he did so, the more they kept talking about it. People were overwhelmed with amazement. He has done everything well, they said. He even makes the deaf ears hear and the mute speak. We bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let me read this wonderful uh, uh, text coming through the WhatsApp line. It says, Hi, Malcolm. The following is today's update from the doctor on mom's status. Very good news is that they have reduced the oxygen they were giving her to 30 she has maintained a saturation of 96. Hallelujah. The doctors wanted to remove the, the ventilator, but she requested to be added one more day on the ventilator. <laughs> now, and it was granted. Sugar levels and pressure levels are normal. Today marks a week since we took mom to hospital and the transformation is amazing. We continue to pray for her and above all, give thanks to the Lord for his answering our prayers. All glory and praise to our Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks. That is Mom Margaret and that is the, the report coming in from uh, our sister Catherine that she's sharing with us about mom's condition. Let me mention this to you, my sister Catherine. When I was in that ventilator, I would not want it, I would not have wanted to be removed from the ventilator even one single moment. I wanted to stay in that machine and at some point it was very scary when they were removing it so that they can give me some food or something. It was very, very scary until the Holy Spirit ministered to me. So we pray for you, Margaret. May the fear that the enemy is trying to bring that you cannot breathe on your own be removed in the name of Jesus. Be removed. It's time for you. You shall walk without any oxygen mask. You shall breathe ah, fresh air in the name of Jesus with yourself. You shall use your lungs. We prophesy over you. You shall use your lungs again. I pray for anybody here listening to me that you shall use your lungs and you shall receive oxygen. You shall use your liver. Yes, your kidneys are getting healed in Jesus' name. Yes, your eyes are receiving perfect sight because the Jesus of the Bible healed the deaf and mute man, a double condition. He cannot see, he cannot speak. The Lord healed that man. And the way the Lord healed the deaf and the mute man, the way the Lord healed that woman's daughter who had a, uh, the woman's child, who, who, that daughter who had a demon at home, is healing you today. Joyce, your brother-in-law is healed in the name of Jesus. We believe in a God who heals, in a God who answers prayer. We go to the book of Revelation, chapter 19. Praise the Lord. This is one of the highlights of this wonderful book. And I will just go straight to read it. And then we shall go and talk about yourself, which we talked about. Our sister Jeanette, who is joining us now, we are talking about joy in prayer. And we mention J for Jesus. O for others. Y for yourself. So we've talked about Jesus, the communion. We've talked about others is praying the prayer of intercession. And yourself 
is the prayer of supplication. So allow me, because in the interest of time, I have to read Revelation and conclude shortly. It says, after this, I heard what sounded like a roar of a great multitude in heaven, shouting. I want you to, to go to, um, what do you call it? The book of Revelation. You know, for me, I have them lined up. So when I say Revelation, I'm a, I can see I'm leaving some of you behind. So I'm giving you a minute to to get to Revelation, Revelation, to get to Revelation, the book of Revelation, that we can be able to conclude together the six-pack reading. And you see how enjoyable it is. And now the scripture is just joined together that from Genesis to Revelation becomes one straight line. You just read it and it's connected. There's nothing that sounds like a different book. All of the books that you're reading are connected. They are the same. That God has given us opportunity to be able to receive and to know that he's a God who answers uh, prayers. He's a God who comes through in our situation. He's a God who has already made, uh, which, is, which, is, um, which is darkness to experience light. That the dimension of God is a dimension of light. That when the light comes upon us, we cannot remain the same. The same way for you are in a night season. When the morning dawns and you see the brightness of the sun, then the protocol of whatever the activities of the day will be will change because it is daylight. So right now, as we are in the place of experiencing this God, we know that he's faithful. Revelation 19. After this, I heard that which sounded like a roar of a great multitude. Roar of a great multitude. When you read these scriptures, I want your imagination to come alive. I want your spirit to come alive. It says, after this, I heard what sounded like a roar of a great multitude in heaven shouting, Hallelujah! Salvation and glory and power belongs to our God. Now those words, I want you to put them inside a roar of a great multitude. Shouting, just like what you are seeing in the Olympics. This time the Olympics are not as well, uh, they are not as um, crowded as before. Because of the pandemic, of course. So we can't joy in a full stadium anymore. It says, after this I heard a sound like the roar of a great multitude shouting in heaven, shouting, Hallelujah! Salvation and glory and power belong to our God. For true and just are his judgments. And he has condemned the great prostitute who corrupted the earth by her adulteries. He also avenged on her the blood of his servants. And again they shouted, Hallelujah! The smoke of her goes up forever and ever. The twenty and four elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshipped God who was seated on the throne. They cried, Amen! Hallelujah! Then a voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, all you his servants, you who fear him small and great alike. You who fear him small and great alike. Then I saw, it says, it says this one, oh, praise the Lord. Then it says, then the angel said to me, Verse 6, it says, Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the roar of rushing waters, and like loud peals of thunder, shouting, Hallelujah! For our Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory. For the wedding of the Lamb has come, 
and his bride has made herself ready. Verse 8. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. Fine linen stands for the for the righteousness for the righteous acts of God's holy people. Verse 9. Then the angel said to me, Write this. Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. And he added, These are the true words of God. Verse 10. At this I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, Do not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and with your brothers and sisters who hold on to the testimony of Jesus. Worship God for the spirit of Jesus. He says, Worship God. For, the, for it is the spirit of prophecy who bears testimony to Jesus. Verse 11. I saw heaven standing open. Ah, yeah, yeah. You know, I love the book of Revelation because it's a book of war. It's a book that shows us, reveals to us, you know, gives us knowledge about the realm of the spirit where we cannot see with our eyes, where we see with our spirit. Right now, as I'm reading this to you, your spirit is catching faith. There is that which God is releasing to you. Faith is being translated into your heart. God is causing the faith of God, you know, the God, the faith, the faith from God is flying into you. You get faith by hearing the word of God. So this is what the word of the Lord says. I saw heaven standing open and there before me was a white horse whose rider is called faithful and true. With justice, he judges and wages war. His eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but he himself. He is dressed in a robe, dipped in blood, and his name is the word of God. The armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Coming out of his mouth is a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh, he has this name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Then I saw an angel standing in the sun who cried in a loud voice to all the birds flying in mid-air. Come, gather together for the great supper of God, so that you may eat the flesh of kings, generals, and the mighty of horses and their riders, and the flesh of all people, free and slave, great and small. Verse 19. Then I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies, gathered together to wage war against the rider on the horse and his army. Verse 20. But the beast was captured, and with it the false prophet, who had performed the signs on his behalf. With his signs, he had deluded those who had re uh, received the mark of the beast and worshipped its image. The two of them were thrown alive into the fairy lake of burning sulfur. The rest were killed with a sword, coming out of the mouth of the rider and of the horse, and all the birds gods themselves on their flesh. Beloved of the Lord, I bring your attention to the angel standing in the sun. The sun, by all means, is the hottest of the elements. But the nature of this angel is that to make an announcement to the day, he had to stand in the sun. The sun represents the government of the day. The Lord gave the sun authority to govern the day, the moon and the stars to govern the night. It's something that we need to understand that as we come to the place of prayer, Revelation 19 is one of those loveliest, powerful revelation about the heavens and what is happening there. I mentioned to you, J for Jesus communion having communion with god having communion with others oh for others intercession praying for others the most answered prayer is the prayer for others and why 
is yourself. Supplication. There's nothing wrong with asking for ourselves if we ask last. Remember that principle. If we ask last, there's nothing wrong with asking for ourselves. So that the last be first and the first last. Matthew 20 verse 16. The Bible commands us to draw near with boldness unto the throne of grace that we might receive mercy and that we may find grace to help us in our time of need. Hebrews 4 verse 16. Jesus asks us, commands us to ask and we shall receive and that your joy may be made full. John 16 verse 24. Beloved, the desire of the things that I long to do now for the Lord requires me to ask you to support what I want to do. And as I ask you last, I know that it is in line with the word of God. In this month, I desire to go and minister to the brethren in Masabit. Masabit is like seven hours by road and I think it's about an hour by air. The Lord has put it in my heart that I need to fly to Masabit this time. Um, we've had challenges of security in that area and there have been a time when you know people from two different tribes have been fighting one another and the Lord has put it in my heart to go to Masabit. I, it requires a lot of resources. It is in this month of August and I desire to go and be with my brethren there. It will mean I stop doing what I do. By profession, I'm a professional photographer. My clients will have to wait because I must do the business of my father first. In coming days, we may need to hand over the physical business of what I do with the growing needs of what I need to do for my father. As I ask, I don't ask for myself. I ask that I may be able to have what I need. And because it's the Lord who put it as a principle and he said that when you ask, Last, there's nothing wrong if you are asking for yourself at the end. Because I have a family, I have things to do, I have bills to pay. A day like today is uh, the fifth of every month, is a deadline for many people. You have so many bills coming up and they need to be cleared on the fifth of every month. So beloved of the Lord, the supplication that I bring before my father for my own behalf is that I may pay all my bills on time. That my name will not be dragged into the names of the people that are defaulting to pay their bills because that I was serving the Lord. My God does not ashamed his children. My God does not ashamed his children and thereby will keep preaching the true gospel of Jesus Christ that there is healing that there is salvation, that there is the, the knowledge of the Holy One. When we expose ourselves to the Word of God, we will not change and begin to trade in the gospel for the sake of getting our own needs met because our needs are met. And the Word of God says that He shall provide for all your needs according to His riches in glory. Hallelujah. What a joy. Jesus commands us to ask, and you shall receive that your joy may be full. How can we refuse to do what will give us full joy? Asking. There's nothing wrong with asking that your joy may be full. I encourage you, beloved of God, obey the Lord. Be willing to obey him. You may have heard his voice that you need to do the more. You need to reach out more. You need to, you need to, to do more for the Lord. Be obedient. Be obedient to hearing the voice of the Lord. It seems that our needs are a gift from God for our prayer life. We are to come with boldness, which means with free speaking. As we abide in him, we can approach God with openness and without reservation about what we pray about. We are not afraid of asking. Because great is my boldness of speech towards you. Great is my glory on your behalf. I am filled with comfort. I overflow with joy in all our affliction, said Apostle Paul in chapter 7 of 2 Corinthians verse 4. 
For the kingdom of God is not about eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Romans 10 verse 14. Uh, Romans 14 verse 17. Our prayer meetings will be the most joyous. Our times will be most joyous and exciting for all our services, all our moments of meeting online. It is our power source. It is our source for its ministry. Prayer is not given to us as a burden to be born. Prayer. Prayer is not an exam duty to fulfill, but a joy and power to which there is no limit. This is wonderful that I'm sharing to you. The reason, you know, there's one quote that I want to bring to you from a book called The Kneeling Christian. You know, the, the reason we don't pray as we ought to is because we do not enjoy prayer as we ought. Prayer is to be enjoyed. Lord, what a change will be within us in one short hour. Spent in thy presence will prevail to make. What heavy burdens from our bosoms to take away. What parched ground refresh us with a shower. We rise we kneel and all around us seems to lower. <laughs> we rise and all the distance and the near stands forth in sunny outline, brave and clear. We kneel how weak we rise. How full of power. Why, therefore, should we do ourselves this wrong or others that we are not always strong, that we are ever overborn with care. Beloved of the Lord, I present to you praying in joy. Joy in prayer. Joy in prayer. Joy. Being able to have joy that we should ever, that we should ever weak or heartless be anxious or troubled when with, when with us is prayer and joy and, 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 and strength and courage are with thee. Those are the words of R.C. Trench that you can get from the book, The Kneeling Christian. The Kneeling, The Kneeling, um, The Kneeling Christian. It's a beautiful book. I want to thank God because of this time we've had and we've read the scripture. Could be here, you're not born again, or you have backslidden. You need a revival in your life, or you're a new believer like Miss Betty. I thank God for you, but for them that are getting saved, the book of Romans chapter 10 verse 9 says, If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. And it says again, Faith comes by hearing, and hearing the word of God. As you have listened to these messages, as you've listened to these scriptures, I believe God has touched your heart. And I want to pray for you who is getting born again. I want you to pray this prayer with me. And those of you who are here, that you, are, you need to go and, you know, share light, take light to others who don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the prayer you will make with them. Repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth that you are Lord. I believe in my heart. God raised you from the dead. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. I am born again. The old is gone, the new has come. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and with your fire. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for this one that has prayed this prayer and rededicated their life to Christ, this one that has also given their life to be born again. Father, I thank you because of what you have done, because of the, the power that you have already transferred from one level of glory to another level of glory. I pray that they will not backslide. I pray for the new believers, empower them, give them the authority to pray, to have joy, Jesus, others, and yourself. The Lord, they may be able to have the joy of prayer. They may enjoy, that we may all enjoy prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lastly, beloved, as we go, 
the giving details if you want to give to this ministry that as we continue to make these videos i've mentioned to you that there are great needs for the for the missions i'll be going to mass up it i'll need to fly it's about 170 dollars to go and back it's about 17,000 kenya shillings to go and come back the lord will provide also we need to stay there for about four days and I thank God that the Lord has already made a way for that to happen. And I pray that the Lord will allow it to happen soon, as soon as possible. That I'm ready, I'm ready to go. He's already said go, then I'm ready to go. So the flights take uh, start on a Friday and come back on a Tuesday. Hence the four days. So uh, when I go to Massabit, it's going to be four days there. And I thank God I'll be looking forward to meet... Uh, my sister Felista, who is there, my brother Joseph, uh, singer Filet Elias, uh, the lovely lady in that wonderful restaurant where we had a fish. Fish in a far, far place where there's no lake, but they, they serve fish there uh, in a place in Massabit. She was also asking, we also have uh, brother Lingole from there. He's, a, he's one of the security guys there. And uh, also my brother Charles in Massabit. So I am looking forward to getting to this place even at a time when the Lord has quietened every activity that the enemy was raising against the people. There was a lot of death. About 73 houses were burnt in Massabit. And I thank God that God is going to give us the wisdom, the, the ability to manipulate, to, to pray with people, to all this thing. But the time of going, I don't know when it is. And when it happens, I'll just you'll just see my update I am in mass a bit. It will not be something I will announce. So do not expect any fundraising for the same. There's no fundraising. The Lord has already spoken to his people and we will be able to go to mass a bit. Also another place that the Lord is releasing my feet to go in this same month, I will be letting you know as he allows me. I'll be going back to, to Meru again, uh, this time to minister to a school. Uh, by the grace of God. My son is in that school and I will be going there not as a parent now but as a servant of God and I will go there and there will be such a great move of the Holy Spirit. Among those children, people will be set free. God will reorder and order and do great things that he has already showed us. So there are two big missions that are coming and I mean, I thank God because he has given us the capacity and I'm talking to you, my friends, my partners that I need your support because to move the, the gospel cannot move without resources and the the ones that i'm able to have personally and the ones that god has already poured into this ministry we use them fully for the sake of adding souls into the kingdom of god more souls more souls more souls more souls on the 29th of august we'll be going to a place called kahuro where they they, will, they are doing a fundraising to, for, to finish the police chapel there that uh, we began to build last year. So this year we must finish that chapel. We've already uh, gotten a, quite a large chunk of the roofing materials and also we want to trust God that we'll be able to finish paying up off the roofing materials. And we have, I have no interest uh, denominationally on that police chapel. It's just that something the Lord said you must do. And I thank God that we must do that. We build physical buildings, we build dispensaries, boreholes, all this that the Lord has given us capacity because he's, he's a great God and he honors us. So let us pray for the gifts that you are giving and for the partners as large in Jesus' name. Let me just pray. Father, we just want to thank you for the gifts and the partners that you have raised among the nations to give towards uh, this greater work of 150 days of Psalms, of missions and reaching out, Lord, and going to the vineyard of the Lord. Father, we thank you that you are already releasing the resources over this, over this time. We thank you for all our bills are paid. And Lord God, there is no slander coming to your children. We thank you, Lord, for them that are among us, Lord, that are in need. We thank you for Joyce. For her daughter is in school as your word declared and we pray even for those that are struggling they are trusting you for school fees they are trusting you lord for medication fees they, 
the medical bills, Lord God. We thank you for healing our sister Rosina. We pray that you are removing her from the hospital, clearing her bills in Jesus' name. We pray, God, that your hand will be upon us. So as we get into this day, we commit ourselves and even commit uh, these faithful partners into your hands. May you bless them. May you bless their resources. May they find seed to sow and bread to eat in the name of Jesus. So we receive these gifts into your into, into your storehouse and that you may enable us to do more of your will. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. And the church of Jesus Christ said, Amen and Amen and Amen. We bless the Lord for you. May the Lord shine his light on you. And thank you so much for watching till the end. Good to see you, Sister Be uh, Miss Betty. And congratulations for receiving the Lord. Thank you so much, my sister Jeanette, my sister Ginger. God bless you, Brother Solomon. Favor, favor, Brother Zach. All of you who have tuned in, my brother Joshua Galoro, my sister Felista, uh, Pastor Joseph in Massabit. All of you wonderful people. I can't mention all of you. And I know also the team that comes to watch right after we have gone. May the Lord bless you as well. May the Lord favor you. May the Lord shine upon you. His grace and his mercy. Shalom, shalom, shalom. I will now sound the trumpet. Blessings to you. I am Malcolm David. God bless. Shalom. 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 Shalom.